to make this video from uh, Sister in Christ Marley. So I'm gonna try to do so as quick as possible. I don't know. Um, I just wanna give all of you other brothers and sisters in Christ some uh, understanding on things and some hope to know that God has not abandoned you. Um, I'll start off with my testimony and it's pretty long and then I'll get down into it. So uh, December of 2002, I decided I didn't want to live anymore. Don't know why. Didn't really have it that bad. Um, I was 17. No, I was 18. Excuse me. I was 18 years old. And I took a whole bunch of Tylenol PMs. And uh, next thing I knew, I had woken up in a place that was not nice, not pleasant. It was uh, really dark, lava flow on each side. You can see everything, like the outlines of everything from the, the lava creating a low light. And in front of me was a giant chair. It was probably as tall as a two-story house, if I had to say. Um, I just don't like telling this story, I'm sorry. So this uh, chair turned around and a giant finger pointed in my face and said to me in a really eerie voice, you see your future home. And then back in my body. Before that happened, I felt a fear come over me that I can't explain to anybody. So very interested in that. Of course, I was given another chance. I started questioning everything. I didn't ever think to read the Bible or any of that. Of course, I wasn't a Christian back then. But I was very concerned about the afterlife after that. So, it took me <clears throat> years, still partying, still doing stupid stuff. It took me 10 years to finally find the truth and come to Christ. And I did. September of 2012, I got saved and baptized for the first time. In November of 2012, my youngest son was born. And it seemed like right after I got saved, everything went downhill. Everything. And that's okay. It's going to be worth it in the end. January 26, 2013, I went in my bedroom to get my baby boy out of his bassinet. I picked him up, and his head went straight back. Only thing I could do was scream to the top of my lungs. I screamed my wife's name, and I remember her meeting me between the bedroom and the living room. And she grabbed him out of my arms and I don't remember anything else nothing the autopsy report came back said it was SIDS sudden infant death syndrome that was a very traumatic experience and uh, I kind of fell away from the Lord for a little while after that I still talked to him. I still prayed. I didn't pick up drinking, didn't do drugs. I just picked up a cussing habit and I had a rage. Not against him. Didn't blame him. I just had a rage for everybody. Didn't matter who it was. Everybody in my daily life, someone walked past me and looked at me wrong. I was ready to fight. That's just the way it was. I don't know why I didn't like it, but it happened. Two years go by. And I was just getting back to coming back to the Lord. You know, as it says in the Bible, the sheep that goes astray. Well, I went astray for a little while. And um, July 2015, I was 30 years old. I got injured at work. Didn't think it was that bad. I thought maybe that I had gotten carpal tunnel. Because I had a, a hand specialist tell me they thought it was carpal tunnel. So uh, 
I didn't really care to, to get it looked at further. I kept on trying to push through and push through. October rolled around and the pain got so intense that I couldn't stand it anymore. By this time, it was all up in this area on both sides and I knew something wasn't right. So I went to see a orthopedic and they did a, a MRI of my back. They didn't check anything up here, just my back. And he found two G degenerative discs in my back and uh, told me that if I didn't keep going, I was gonna be in a wheelchair by the time I'm 50. I said, all right, doc, I'll just keep on pushing through. Well, the, the job didn't want me to come back until they knew exactly what was wrong. I tried to explain to them this, you know, my back problem, but they wanted to know what this was. So, 2016, still on long-term disability, all that stuff, I get a letter in the mail. They terminated me. May of 2016, they let me go. And then long-term disability dropped me the very next day after they said they wouldn't. So we're struggling this time, struggling. And uh, it took them another year to actually find the problem. I believe it was November of 2017 they found the problem. But before that, August, when we had that eclipse in 2017, I made a promise to the Lord. And I know we're not supposed to do that, but I've, I've kept my promise this far. I told him that I would read four chapters a day in the Bible until I read it through and through, and then I would do it over again. Put it to you this way, it took me an entire year to read the Bible front to back, reading four chapters a day. I should be reading more. I know there's people out there that do. But uh, that was a big step for me. I'm not a reader at all. I'm, I'm ADHD. Can't concentrate on anything um, for long periods of time. But anyways, um, November of 2017, I go in and they do another MRI, but they do up here, on the back of my neck and all that to see what the problem is thought maybe I had a slip disc in my neck wasn't that doctor tells me you know you may have this but I highly doubt it he said some thoracic outlet syndrome so he explained to me what it was he said normally pitchers in the major leagues and things like that get it and I was like okay so I called up um, a doctor that specializes that in Dallas which is three and a half hours for me. Get over there, made an appointment, and got over there, and uh, sure enough, wasn't carpal tunnel. Thoracic outlet syndrome it is. How did I get that? I have no idea. All I know is he told me that I needed the surgery very, very soon, or I would die from blood clots. I said, okay. I wasn't gonna have the surgery. I was just gonna let the good Lord take me. I really was. My wife called and scheduled the appointment behind my back. So it was set for March 22nd, 2018. We did the surgery. Everything seemed fine. Um, come out of surgery. That was my first surgery I ever had in my entire life. But I come out of surgery and uh, everything was fine. I was. You know, eating and wanting to sit up and watch TV and all this stuff. I started feeling goofy that night. But I didn't think nothing of it. So I, I just went on to sleep. Woke up at 5 a.m. The nurse was in front of the bed with a computer and she was rattling. It must make a whole lot of noise. So I woke up and I asked her what she was doing. She said, I'm getting your medicine ready. And I says, okay. Um, I started feeling weird. Like, very weird. Like, something wasn't right. And I told her that. I said, hey, something's not right. And she looked at me, and she had this look on her face that concerned me. So I looked over at my wife. She had the same look. And I said, hey, I'm dizzy. 
and then boop lights out next thing i know i'm coming to um with a nurse on top of me hollering in my face i didn't know what she was saying but when that happened when that one before the lights went out i felt a peace come over me that was stronger than anything i ever felt in my entire life my wife even said i was laying there flatlined with a smile on my face it was beautiful i wanted to stay in it i really did um but i came back to whatever <clears throat> it was weird because my vision came and then the sound came like right after it was so weird i couldn't i could see her mouth moving and she was right right in my face i could see her mouth moving but i didn't hear anything and then uh, all of a sudden i heard her say tell us what we need to do and i said what are you doing i was just asleep i heard exact words to me were sir nobody sleeps with their eyes open well that was all it took for me i knew what happened um some people call it coded, whatever. I call it death, right? Your heart stops. You can't make your heart stop on your own unless you do something stupid like I tried to do in 2002. But anyhow, we, we got that happen. And, uh, you know, I stayed. I stayed strong in my faith. Um, after I came back to the Lord in 2015, I stayed. I didn't, I didn't wander off anymore. Um... 2019 rolls around found out my dad's cancer had spread all through his body now he never smoked drank nothing he was the best dad i'm telling you all my friends wanted him to be their dad um didn't cuss he was just cool you know he was he was in man's standards he was a good man uh nobody's good in god's standards but um we found out the cancer spread on march 1st and they sent him home on hospice. I had all the faith in the world that he was going to pull through this because this wasn't the first time we've been given news like this. Um, I kept my faith up until the end. Seven days later, he died. And I stayed right by his side. You know, uh, I tell people this. PTSD is a real thing. A lot of people deal with it that are Marines and, and EMTs, EMT, excuse me, police. Those people deal with it too. But when you find your child dead and have to go through some of the stuff that I've been through, you have it too. And it's it's been a uphill climb. And I don't care what anybody tells you. Becoming a Christian and actually believing, being a true believer, that there's no shadow of doubt in your mind whatsoever that God is real and Jesus Christ came and died and, was, and rose again on the third day. There's no doubt in your mind. It's not rainbows and butterflies from then on. I'm telling you, your faith will be tested and tried. You'll go through all kinds of stuff. So if you don't feel Him, just know it's not Him. It's us. I've been down that road too. It's been a while, probably, um, well, the beginning, I take that back, beginning of this month, I had a dream. But before that, it was two or three months. See, when we don't feel him, it's we're doing something wrong. It's not him. He's there. He's always there. He, he never will abandon us. He'll, he'll never leave us. You just got to keep the faith and know that he is there. Look, y'all, if I can make it through the stuff I've made it through, then whatever you're going through, I promise you, you can too. Keep the faith. Keep reading His Word. If you read His Word and get to know Him, you will love Him. And when you love Him, you won't want to depart from that. Anybody can say, yes, I accept Jesus in my life and not read His Word and never love Him. Because how can you know somebody if you don't, talk to him if you never heard from him and that's what his words for for us to get to know him and when we get to know him and love him he knows us too trust me things will get better it may not in this life but things will get better once that trumpet sounds and i believe firmly it's going to be soon once that trumpet sounds y'all all this stuff here that's not going to matter to us at all how about that?
Keep the faith. God bless all of you. Hey everybody, my name is Amanda and I am staying kingdom minded on YouTube and Instagram. Marley asked me to share a few words with you guys on how I cope when things are tough or hard. And honestly, I think it's all about what we think about. The Bible says to take every thought into captivity. So if we're really thinking about what we're thinking about and we stop what I lovingly call our stinking thinking, if we just stop allowing ourselves to dwell and think and ponder on things that are not uplifting the kingdom of God. If they don't align with scripture, if they don't build you up, build up the kingdom, if they do not bring happiness and joy, and or if they are not biblical thoughts, if they're thoughts that tear down, if they're thoughts that contradict the word of God, if they're thoughts that bring about spirits of anxiety and depression into your mind, I encourage you to push through the hard times in life by keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Allow God to wrap his loving arms around about you, whether it's through his word, because the word of God is God, John 1 and 1 teaches us. If you want to spend time with the Lord, get into the word of God, because that is the way that you're going to push past the hard times. I want to encourage you to feel the warm embrace of a friend. Maybe it's a significant other. Maybe it's a shoulder to cry on at a local assembly that you attend. Maybe it's a direct message on Instagram or a comment under a YouTube video where you interact with someone and you feel the love of Christ coming through into your world because God sends people of all kinds. I encourage you to find a community of like-minded believers, whether it's online or in person, preferably in person, if at all possible. Allow the Lord's people, allow your brothers and sisters in Christ to love on you. Stay in the word of God. Think about what you think about. And remember, you're the landlord of your own mind. If you don't like the thought, if it's not good, if it's not prosperous, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, kick it out. You're the boss. You're the landlord of your own mind. Think about what you're thinking about. God will give you the strength to push past every single difficult situation you face in life because he's faithful and he's a good, good father. Thanks, Marley, for including me in your video. I truly appreciate you, sis. Keep sharing the truth.